Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to this talk. Um, so this talk is about uh, interconnecting Neutron and uh, network operators BGP VPNs. So uh, this is about telco stuff. So don't be afraid. We'll take care of uh, explaining to you uh, what this all means and what this is all about. So first of all, um, what are BGP VPNs? So to, to explain this better, it's important to avoid the confusion with the uh, other kinds of VPNs that you probably know. Uh, typically IPsec VPNs or SSL VPNs. So what we call BGP VPNs uh, are pretty different. They have no encryption uh, built in. The P in these BGP VPNs stands for private, and you should think about private addressing. Then for isolation of, uh, of scopes and um, uh, avoid overlapping, overlap issues. And one can still obviously add encryption over a BGP VPN. It's just that it's not built in like in a, an IPsec or SSL VPN. And the second important difference is that the isolation provided with BDP VPNs is not managed by uh, the customers using the, the virtual private networks. It's managed by the operator that uh, operates the, the shared physical network, the shared physical infrastructure. So that makes these BDP, BDP VPNs very different uh, than IPsec or SSL VPNs. So technically, we want to explain a bit our this is a, a very simplified one slide explanation of how BGP VPNs work. If you want to know more, you'll have to dig into uh, more serious documentation. Um, so to, to allow uh, uh, having multiple overlapping uh, networks, uh, you, you need to have a data plane encapsulation, a data plane isolation. And in BGP VPNs, uh, initially, uh, IPLS and it's still what's largely used. MPLS was used, is used to isolate the traffic of uh, different VPNs. Um, it's not the only thing that you can do with MPLS. So again, if you want to know more about MPLS, you'll have to go beyond what we explained here. Um, so what you can just retain is that we use what we call an MPLS label to distinguish the packets on the wire between the different VPNs. Then we need a control plane to send traffic to its destination uh, uh, in the context of a VPN. And here, uh, the protocol that is used is BGP, more precisely VPN extensions of uh, MPBGP, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and here what we do is, <clears throat> perhaps you know the, when BGP is used for the global internet, we advertise a, a prefix and say that it, it's reachable via a router. Here, uh, and with additional properties. Here in BGP VPNs, we advertise a prefix in the context of a VPN, which is identified by what we call a root target. And we say that it reachable via a router using this such or such MPLS label to distinguish the traffic from the traffic of other VPNs. Again, this is simplified. Uh, what we call a, a root target is not, strictly speaking, a VPN identifier. It's much more flexible, and you can do many different things with, with this. Um, but this is the, the, the short summary. Uh, these BGP VPNs were uh, invented some time ago, initially for Earth VPNs, and they were later extended to cover Ethernet VPNs. With various flavors, the, the most recent one, which is called eVPN, uh, being the, 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 the one having the more potential today. And later, these, these extensions have been generalized to support not only MPLS as the encapsulations, but MPLS over GRE, MPLS over UDP, or VXLAN. So this is the reason why we call them BGP VPNs rather than the historical name uh, of BGP MPLS VPNs. So they are, these VPNs are kind of old. They are as old as uh, Ethernet VLANs. They were invented in the late 90s. Uh, they have had incremental improvements since. Uh, they have lots of deployments, in particular uh, uh, in telcos, and they are very interoperable. Uh, there are a few uh, IETF RFCs that describe them. If you have uh, on this slide the reference if you, if you want a starting point. Um, and you, you can be aware that uh, multi-vendor deployments are commonplace, which illustrate the level of uh, interoperability. And they are also uh, very scalable. Uh, uh, for instance, um, Large operators like Orange or NTNT and others have uh, BGP MPLS deployments serving millions of VPN sites. This gives an idea of the scale that this technology can, ach can achieve uh, thanks to a, a toolbox of established practices and protocol extensions to improve the scaling. And now I'll let uh, um, um, Paul uh, follow up on the topic. 
By the way, we, so didn't, we didn't even introduce ourselves, right? We did right? not introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, Thomas Morin, working for Orange. Paul Carver with at and I'm Tim Irnish, working for Ericsson. Yeah. So a uh, little bit of history. Back when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, telcos sold private lines. And then we came along with frame relay and ATM, which were totally non-IP protocols. And as IP became more and more prevalent, we started migrating our core networks to IP. And then we, we realized that customers still wanted the, the private kind of connect connectivity. So a lot of your companies may very well be using MPLS VPNs without you knowing it in your legacy IT. Because what happened was AT&T and the other telcos um, migrated the backbones to an MPLS backbone and um, would deploy customer edge routers to the customer that would provide multiple VPNs. A customer wants to use, for example, private addressing, or they just want to be able to transport um, traffic separate from their internet connectivity. Uh, in many cases, the voice over IP is, is a common use case, where there'll be a customer premise piece of equipment that'll use an MPLS VPN to attach the voice, the, the voice over IP phones, and also, for example, provide internet service and keep the two separate. Um, the, the telcos also began using MPLS VPNs internally for our infrastructure. So in order to interconnect our, our various components of our network infrastructure, pieces of the, the mobility cell phone networks. So there's, there's a number of use cases where MPLS D VPNs are deployed since, since the 90s, as, as uh, Tomai has indicated. And as OpenStack people, you may be more separate from the people who run your network. So you may not be aware that in your data center, you've got OpenStack networking with, with, with Neutron, uh, and at the edge, somebody's managing a physical router that may very well be interconnecting your sites. So what, what we're talking about here is bringing that knowledge of your MPLS VPNs into OpenStack, whether you're a, a telecom operator or whether you're a customer who is purchasing MPLS VPN service. And if you, for example, want to attach multiple of your same data centers with their, each, of, each with their separate neutron networking to the same wide area network, we, we have the ability here to interconnect your neutron networks with, um, with your pre-existing MPLS VPNs that you may be uh, purchasing. So the, the basic components of this are, it's, it's broken down into an admin and a tenant portion. And so the admin is the person who knows what MPLS VPNs you have available. And these are identified by something called a route target. And so the route targets that you have available to you are sort of, they're usually handed to you by someone. So you, you, you bought a, an MPLS VPN to interconnect your, um, your data centers, and maybe you have another MPLS VPN to connect your remote offices, and maybe you're purchasing a IPsec VPN service that um, comes with uh, IPsec termination on the carrier's network that is then interconnected within the carrier's network to an MPLS VPN that delivers to your data center. These are just examples of services that you may already, that your companies may already be using. So those route targets are sort of outside data that your network administrators would, would be aware of what MPLS VPNs are identified by which route targets. So the admin in your OpenStack cloud can then create a BGP VPN object that is mapped to the route target and hand that object to your tenant. So the tenant can then create Neutron networks and associate those networks or routers to an admin created BGP VPN object. So the, the admin gives the, the BGP VPN to the tenant, and then a, a user within that tenant is then able to associate a, a, a network or a router to that VPN object. So when this happens, so when this happens, the, the API co calls come into the BGP VPN service plugin, and then there's a set of drivers. We have uh, four drivers at this point in time. We have the, the reference driver with bagpipe. We have an ODL driver, a Contrail driver, and a Nuage driver. And so the API comes into the, the service plugin, and then that triggers the back end to perform this association between 
the neutron network or router and the BGP VPN, which is then mapped to a route target, which then connects out. So the BGP peers in this, um, in this diagram, in a typical use case, that would be a, an edge router. That would be a router that connects out to the wide area network. So that um, it could be a virtualized router, but it might very well be a hardware router that has a, 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 a fiber going out to the wide area network and it's carrying um, a, a multiple MPLS separated VPNs. And so the back end would advertise the routes for your neutron networks out to your wide area network and allow you to attach your, VP, your VMs to the neutron network and have the packets carried over MPLS out through this gateway across the wide area network. Uh, do you wanna take this one? So in the particular case where an SDN controller is used, um, the BGP VPN service plugin will use the driver for the specific SDN controller. And well, of course, the details of how things are done inside the SDN controller can be different depending on the controller. But typically, you will have a, a northbound interface that will be a REST API. Um, this will be used by the driver to actually pass information to the SDN controller. And then this SDN controller system will have a BGP, a BGP speaker uh, able to advertise and consume um, uh, routes exchanged with BGP peers. And the thousand-band interface of the SDN controller will be used to actually configure the, the, the data plane on the virtual switches to actually forward MPLS traffic, uh, receive MPLS traffic to the VMs, and, and traffic from the VMs forwarded as MPLS toward the VPNs. The reference driver that, that we added to the project uh, works uh, differently, of course, like other reference drivers in Neutron, it's not based on an external system uh, that would be an SDN controller. So the one we, we added uh, actually uh, is uh, designed to work uh, in a context where you use um, op the OpenV switch mechanism driver as an ML2 uh, driver. We have work in progress to do the same uh, architecture with uh, the Linux Bricks mechanism driver. So uh, in this case, when an API, an API call is made to define uh, an association, an interconnection between, for instance, a network and uh, an external BGP VPN, um, the driver, which is called the backpipe driver because it relies on, on a component called backpipe, will use uh, RPCs, typically over RabbitMQ, but of course could be something else, um, to pass the information about this BGP VPN attachment um, to the the backpipe BGP component that runs on compute nodes. Um, and this is done via an extension added into the Open vSwitch, uh, the Neutron Open vSwitch agent. This backpipe BGP component is responsible for advertising BGP VPN routes, receiving BGP VPN routes, and configuring the data plane accordingly. Uh, meaning, uh, when you receive a, a packet for which destination, uh, for which you have a route uh, to a destination which is, a, which is a, an MPLS route, uh, add all the information so that the current traffic will be actually encapsulated and sent um, on the right interface or tunnel. So to do this, we actually add uh, a bridge to, to the existing bridges on a compute node, a bridge called BR, BRMPLS, which allows to uh, segment the roles uh, between the different components. The Neutron uh, OpenV switch agent is only responsible for the BRINT and BRTUN bridges, and the Backpipe BGP component only responsible for, for BMPLS. You don't have a um, uh, risk of inconsistency because the life cycle of the different agents are uh, different. And then the traffic is carried uh, over MPLS toward VPNs. So we have a demo. Um, so the, 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 in this demo, uh, what, uh, what we will show, uh, so the starting point is uh, assume you have a, an open stack deployed. So here it's a single, uh, it's a single VM uh, dev stack. You have an open stack cloud that is interconnected with, uh, to an, uh, an IPM PLS1 using BGP VPNs already. So you have a pre-existing customers with pre-existing uh, VPNs in the one. And the, both are glued together with uh, BGP MPLS routers. IPMPLS routers having uh, the configuration in place for the BGP VPN protocols, but no per customer 
but not any per customer information. Uh, so the platform used for this demo, is, so we have a Destack VM um, using the Open vSwitch uh, backpack driver that I just described. Uh, and we have a lab router which is running the VM as well, and a VPN side which is emulated also as a VM. So what we will do is uh, interconnect uh, um, a virtual machine of tenant red to uh, the VPN red of the maybe you have a, we have an, let's assume we have an enterprise an enterprise named red. It's not a fancy name, but uh, um, and we will just show uh, something very spectacular as you will see. Sorry, I need to, I need to actually to switch it on. Okay. Um, so uh, initially, uh, if we look at the at the route present on the on the um, on the router to which the physical site, the physical VPN site is connected, we don't have uh, many routes. We have only the routes for the for the one site and for the, the, the IP present on the router itself. So uh, if we look at the, at the admin interface uh, on, uh, on OpenStack, so we are logging in as admin on the, on the OpenStack cloud, we see that we actually have a, a tenant called, uh, called Red. And uh, for this tenant, we will uh, configure a BGP VPN. Actually, so what I'm showing here is the, 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 the Horizon interface for the BGP VPN service plugin. Um, so here you have an example of a, a creation of a network for a tenant, uh, which is actually the, the demo tenant. So we just define the, the control plane identifier of a VPN, which is called a root target, and we create the BGP VPN. At this point, of course, nothing is made. No association has been, has been done. Um, we will do the same creation of uh, BGP VPNs for 10 and red using a hit template, illustrating the hit binding that were added to the project. So using this hit template, we defined uh, two VPNs for uh, the 10 and red, VPN A, red VPN A and red VPN B. And we also defined a VPN for 10 and blue, additionally to the one created via the Horizon uh, GUI. Now, if we connect to uh, the same OpenStack uh, using uh, this time as uh, a user of uh, the red tenant. Oh, sorry. Well, I mean, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if we look at the configuration on the router, the configuration on the physical router to which the physical sites of customer red is, is connected to, if we, if we look at the configuration on this, on this router, we see the the configuration of the VPN for uh, customer red, and we see, sorry, I'm switching between two pointers. So we see the same root target identifier being used, the same one as the one that we have defined on the uh, admin horizon interface. Now, logging in as customer red, we see um, the, the, the two VPNs that are defined for those customers. Of course, uh, this tenant does not see the VPNs of uh, other tenants. And uh, again, using a hit template for uh, a Swift uh, demo, uh, we create um, an association. We create a network. In this network, we spoon a VM, and we associate the network to uh, the, the VPN called uh, Red VPN A. So this is, this is pretty short. Um, and what we... What, what we will see is that once the, 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 the VM is uh, created and, and booted, we can actually ping this VM from the customer side. So ladies and gentlemen, you're going to witness something incredible, uh, very spectacular. As soon as the VM has booted, you can see an ICMP call request and a reply. That was a bit too fast. So just to illustrate the, the fact that everything is API driven, uh, we can actually uh, disconnect disassociate the network from the BGP, BGP VPN. And at this point, the ping stops uh, working. And we can reassociate it uh, and then um, look at the route actually present on the, on the, on the, on the IP APNS uh, router. So here you see the route advertised <coughs> 
let's say by OpenStack, by the different components uh, deployed by Neutron to advertise BGP VPN routes. So you see the, the VM IP advertised to the, the IP MPLS routers uh, by these systems. And we can also look at the, the troubleshooting interface on the compute nodes for the BGP components running on the compute nodes. And in this interface, we can navigate in the different elements to actually see uh, from where the route was, uh, was advertised. We can also see the MPLS label that was advertised. So this is the, this is the control panel identifier for the route. And the MPLS label advertised is this one. And we can actually look at the, the MPLS traffic flowing uh, to and from uh, the, the compute node and actually see that uh, the MPLS traffic uh, is using the, the label advertised. This is the traffic toward the VM. Of course, we, we have the same thing for the traffic coming uh, from the VM, but using this time the labels advertised by the one. And I think we're done for the demo. So uh, what we wanted to illustrate, um, uh, additionally to the concept behind the service plugin and the use case behind it and how it's actually implemented, is uh, how we work with the Neutron community uh, to, uh, to actually uh, make this possible. Uh, and it's interesting to illustrate uh, the, the, the fact that uh, uh, it was, well, lots of small details, but overall quite easy to, uh, uh, we actually found the different hooks for modularity, easy to use for the different components, but there are actually many of them. Um, and perhaps the slide is not fully exhaustive, uh, by the way, but typically we have, um, um, we are using the hooks to uh, define uh, extension uh, to the Neutron API, hooks for loading service plugins and loading their drivers. Uh, for the specific um, OBS backpack driver, we are using the, the registry callback the neutron registry callback uh, to have notifications on creation of uh, ports or networks or routers. Uh, for the integration on the compute nodes, we are using the, the, the L2 extension, L2 ex agent extension framework that was added uh, uh, in, the, in the past year. Um, we are doing an increasing, an increasing use of uh, neutron lib, even though the, the, the the, the, the movement uh, from defining things in Neutron to Neutronlib is, uh, is something in progress. We are, we are following it. For the CLI, we are again using uh, uh, hooks called entry points. Um, and this work will be done in a comparative way, comparable way for the OpenStack CLI. And we have again plugins for Heat, for Tempest, for Horizon. Um, and last but not least, we are using the different hooks uh, set up by the, the infra team uh, to allow a project such as ours, or every project, uh, to define new jobs in the CI. That is to say, so, so for some of these uh, uh, hooks or frameworks that we are using, we had to work uh, with uh, Neutron developers uh, to bring uh, improvement or fixes. Um, so it really showed that uh, a project like ours has to work with Neutron developers to uh, uh, perhaps add things that were not complete yet, or uh, invent new things to uh, facilitate uh, integration, like the L2Agent extension. Uh, but in the end, we found that we had a, an hospitable enough environment to produce this as a modular uh, project in the Neutron Stadium. And we also were, uh, our life was made um, much e easy uh, thanks to the, the, the existence of other Neutron projects to take uh, inspiration from. Um, now, um, you have heard about the Neutron Stadium. Uh, uh, and the, 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 the requirements put on Neutron Stadium projects to match uh, the expectation of the Neutron community. Um, so um, we, we want to say that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's indeed a significant effort that is required to match these expectations. Um, so work is required in particular for, to get everything ready on, uh, on, on the CI testing side. Uh, for us, it had a downside. In the last cycle, we were able to push less features uh, because of this work on, the, on, the, on these stadium requirements. But the, the, the good side of things, obviously, is that it, it pushes, it forces us in the right direction 
and having, a, in particular, better test coverage is something that, uh, that helps a lot uh, future maintenance and future work. But this work uh, did not happen only in OpenStack in Neutron. It happened also uh, thanks to a collaboration with uh, OPNV, and I will let uh, Tim uh, um, uh, explain this. Yeah. Okay, thanks you. <coughs> so, um, OPNV is uh, something that we call a midstream integration project, uh, which focuses on two things. One is automated install of OpenStack-based uh, cloud environments uh, for uh, particular use cases. So there is a notion in OPNV that is called scenario, which essentially is a particular configuration of the stack plus all the needed components uh, for a given use case. And it also automatically tests these configurations uh, in a CI framework uh, quite, quite often. Every each scenario is run every couple of days. Um, and as you have seen from the sort of the stack configuration for BGP VPN, BGP VPN is actually one of those use cases where you have to integrate a lot of components, some of them being developed within OpenStack, some of them being developed outside OpenStack. Uh, so um, OPNV is actually the place that gives all the developers working in these different com communities on the BGP VPN use case visibility if the overall system works. And if something breaks, we usually find out very quickly because we uh, consume changes from all the different places and put them together and uh, see if it still works. Um, and as a byproduct, since we need to do that for our own purpose, we are providing a relatively simple way of actually deploying a system that has all the different components and that is readily configured to actually run the BGP VPN use case. Um, in the SDN VPN project within OPNV, which does this, uh, we are right now focusing on those cases where an SDN controller is used, as introduced by Thomas. Uh, we are planning to support the uh, reference implementation as well. And we have integration with uh, two of the four OPNV installers, Fuel and Triple O uh, slash Apex. And we have uh, scenarios that are derived from the baseline scenario that OPNV maintains, OpenStack plus ODL, uh, taking care of L2 and L3 networking. Uh, and we have it in both an HA and a non-HA flavor, meaning uh, in one case it's uh, being deployed on bare metal in a redundant way, and in another case it's all on one host in a, in a nested uh, fashion. So um, this is sort of the brief version of it. Uh, we went into a little bit more detail on OPNFV in our uh, uh, companion talk yesterday. So if you, in case you missed that, check out the video from that one. Uh, there is more information on what exactly we do in OPNFV there. Uh, and that, I think you have a closing slide, right? Yep. So as a takeaway, you can keep as a, as a key idea that uh, it's one API allowing tenants to, un to control interconnections uh, between their resources and, uh, on, in Neutron and their BGP VPNs. The use cases behind this are the typical public uh, cloud operator uh, when it's run by a telco um, that needs to be interconnected with business customers having MPLS VPNs. Uh, the other use case is uh, InterDC, distributed cloud and edge cloud. In these cases, BGP VPNs can be used as a tool to interconnect data centers. And a use case close to this one is the case where you have uh, multi-pop deployments for NFV where you need to interconnect pops. Uh, this project has multiple drivers for several SDN controllers and a neutron driver. Uh, it has uh, different bindings that you can use to, interconnect with, to interact with it, uh, the CLI, Horizon, and Heat. And we have uh, well, various uh, uh, evolutions on the radar. Uh, that we can mention. We, we plan to complete the eVPN part of the API and uh, bind it to uh, the different drivers uh, uh, for which the work on eVPN is in progress. Uh, we have remaining work to do to match, as I said earlier, uh, neutron stadium requirements, in particular on the testing side. Uh, we also plan to uh, evolve the APIs for finer grain control of uh, routing, uh, typically uh, static routes uh, playing with BGP preferences and route leaking. Um, we will also consider supporting multiple drivers and backends at the same time uh, to allow migration scenarios. Um, and one thing that we can mention, which is uh, a bit orthogonal to this project, but which is important for this project, uh, is uh, in, a, in a typical scenario, the encapsulation that you will want between a compute node and, for instance, 
uh, a net router is MPLS over IP, whether MPLS over GRE or MPLS over UDP. Uh, and for this uh, to be possible, we depend on uh, having the feature line in OVS for many of the um, DSDN controllers that we are uh, supporting indirectly via this project. So typically, this is something that's needed for the OVS backpipe driver, but also by the open daylight and, uh, and, uh, 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 and other drivers. Um, so this is something that's, that's, uh, that's been uh, in progress, a work in progress in the past uh, month. Actually, there was a talk by Simon Homan yesterday, uh, which was uh, about the, 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 um, the foundation work to make this possible. So we, we, expect, it to, we expect this to land uh, uh, soonish and then see the work on MPLS over UDP uh, arrive at some point. Uh, last thing that, uh, that I, we can mention is that we, we have an expectation to see uh, an improved feature parity among drivers. Today, not all drivers support all the, the, the different types of association, for instance. So this is something that we would like to see uh, improved. And the last thing that I want to highlight is the fact that uh, such a project is, I believe, uh, we believe a, a good illustration of the, the way the work can be uh, um, efficiently uh, led uh, across OPNV and OpenStack. Uh, here we, we actually uh, experience how uh, OPNV uh, facilitated and triggered uh, uh, the work on components around the solution, typically on installers uh, and uh, um, testing. And that's Question, it. Um, do you have questions? Sure. Thank you. Very interesting presentation. Uh, a couple of questions. What is the uh, OpenStack version you're using for all this testing? Oh, uh, in, in the context of OPNV or in the context of CI testing in OpenStack? In the, in the context of basically the demo that you showed. What is the version that you use for OpenStack? Oh, the demo was made uh, based on our um, Newton release. And so the CI testing that we are doing is typically based on the master uh, branch on which we are working. But we have uh, releases for... Um, Liberty Mitaka and backports. We had backports. We have backports um, less maintained today uh, for um, Juno and Kilo. Uh, and the OPNV work is currently based on the on Mitaka release, I believe? Right now it's based on Mitaka, but uh, in the context of the ongoing the new uh, release cycle in OPNV, we will be based to Newton. Yeah. Second question I have is regarding the uh, data plane and the, the uh, communication to the SDN controller. Uh, I'm assuming that you are using the specific SDN controller or you're using the uh, uh, open daylight controller to the communication to physical router in terms of the data plane, data plane control. What are you using for the testing? You mean in OpenFV when we use it yeah, in CI there? Uh, it's so op OpenFV or this uh, open daylight controller. What are you mm -hmm. using for the testing? Uh, in, in the testing that we do in OpenFV, we use the ODL uh, and uh, ODL basically uh, is like one big virtual router that spans the whole data center and, there, and it presents itself to BGP peers as one BGP speaker for all the compute nodes that, that knows the routes of all the compute nodes. Other questions, maybe? Okay. So thank you for listening to us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.